Good day and welcome to another Paddox Club video tutorial. In the previous Paddox Club video tutorial, Professor Paddock discussed the uses of drones in sectional title schemes. In this follow-on video, I will outline the legalities behind the use of remotely piloted aircraft systems, or more commonly known as drones, in more detail. The use of drones has been unregulated and essentially illegal until recently. New rules found in Part 101 of the South African Civil Aviation's regulations regulating the use of drones have been signed by the Minister of Transport and came into effect on Wednesday 1 July 2015. A drone operator need not um, have a pilot's license if he is operating the drone for private or hobby use. A remote pilot's license is only required for commercial, corporate and non-profit use. These operators must obtain civil aviation author uh, authority approved and valid remote pilot license, as well as a letter of approval to operate the drone. This letter of approval will be valid for a period of 12 months. I would not advise bodies corporate to take on the risk of potential liability by employing an unlicensed drone pilot. While you do not need to have these documents when buying a drone, the seller will have to make you aware of the requirements. Anyone, of the, anyone above the age of 18 is allowed to purchase a drone, but the regulations restrict the use of drones dramatically. An operator cannot fly over or along a public road or use a public road for take or for landing of a drone. Drones cannot fly more than 120 meters above the ground, and all private drones may only fly as high as the highest object within 300 meters lateral distance of the drone. Drones cannot fly within 10 kilometers of an aerodrome. Commercial drone operators uh, will be able to get special permission to fly close to airports to accomplish their work, provided they have airband radio and communicate with air traffic control. Private drone pilots will not be able to fly closer than 10 kilometers from an airport, even if the airport gives them permission. Furthermore, drones cannot be flown within 50 meters above or close to a person or a crowd of people, structure or building without prior South African Civil Aviation Authority approval. Private and commercial pilots can fly closer than 50 meters from people if these pilots are part of the operation and under the control of the drone pilot. Private and commercial pilots can also fly closer than 50 meters to buildings if the owner of that building has given permission. Commercial drone operations will be able to get special permission to fly close to buildings to accomplish their work, such as survey and building inspection operations. Drones cannot be flown adjacent to or above a nuclear power plant, a prison, a police station, a crime scene, court of law, national key points or a strategic installation. The rules do not apply to toy aircraft or unmanned free balloons or other types of aircraft which cannot be managed on a, on a real-time basis during flight. The regulations clearly define toys as designed or intended for use in play by children. The regulations for drones are actually much less restrictive than the regulations for model aircraft. For example, drones can fly at night, whereas model aircraft may not fly at night. A drone cannot be operated in adverse weather conditions, as visual contact must be maintained with the drone by the operator, unless in approved beyond visual line of sight or night operations. Drones cannot be used to transport cargo or make deliveries or carry dangerous goods as cargo. Drone operators may not release, dispense, drop, deliver or deploy an object or substance from the drone and drones cannot tow another aircraft, perform aerial or aerobatic displays or be flown in formation or swarm. All incidents involving a drone must be reported, especially where there is any injury to a person, damage to property or destruction of the drone beyond economic repair. It is clear that there are many beneficial uses to drones in community schemes, as was highlighted by Graham in his previous video. There are also obviously drawbacks, which include the loss of privacy. I am of the view that these problematic issues can be mitigated if the use of drones for security, survey and inspection purposes are included in the scheme rules, filed at the Deeds Office, and the owners and occupiers, and possibly also the neighbouring property owners and occupiers, are notified of the dates and times the drones will be operated. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the discussion forum.